Hey everybody, thank you for taking some time to watch my book update. Uh, these are the books that I finished in February 2024. And, uh, and then I'm also gonna talk about some of the books that I'm hoping to read in March. In case anybody's like, oh, that sounds interesting. What are you up to? What are you reading? And you can join me and you can comment and you can write about things and you can share your opinions about any of these books as well. And so, uh, yeah, so if you wanna follow along with my my reading, I used to be on Goodreads more, but I switched over to Storygraph, uh, and I'll include a link to my Storygraph profile, I think, is, I don't know, uh, in the comments, and you can follow along with me there. Um, but yeah, Goodreads became just a little too clunky for me, and so I'm making the switch over to Goodreads, and yeah, that or to Storygraph, and yeah, that means I lost a lot, I'll lose a lot of uh, just the tracking of what I read last year, but you know, it's fine, I'm starting fresh starting fresh. So in January, I completed 10 books and um, February, a little slower and that's okay. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, have been working on some larger books as well, uh, which has slowed me down quite a bit. But the first book that I finished is called Liberating Jonah. And I checked this out from the Northwest University Library. I am currently working on a uh, a, a book project about Jonah. And so uh, when I get stalled out on the writing, I go to uh, look at some of the other resources out there and get different perspectives on Jonah. And uh, this book by Miguel de la Torre uh, is looking at Jonah from a liberation theology perspective with an intention towards reconciliation. And so if you are a theology nerd, then that makes sense. If you're not, uh, then that's okay. Uh, this, But this was uh, good. I, there were several things that I tabbed that I will take notes for uh, and potentially uh, refer back to for my, uh, my, my project that I'm working on. But Jonah is one of those books that I just love so much. And every time I get to talk about it, I just, I love talking about it. And so the, my project is not so much looking at, uh, liberation theology and reconciliation as much as identity and calling in the book of Jonah. Uh, and so there's not a ton, but there's still really in interesting information and perspective uh, in this book. Uh, and uh, and so I, it wasn't my favorite book on Jonah. It wasn't my favorite book that I read this month on Storygraph. I rated it 2.75. And you're like, Jason, why are you talking about it so much? Um, you know, I just thought it was longer than it needed to be. Um, even though I have several, like I said, several tabs, it was a little long. Uh, and I don't know if uh, if De La Torre really was convincing in in their point. And so, um, but it was worthwhile read. I'm glad I read it. Uh, and I'm glad I checked it out from the library. Uh, the next book that I finished is called Lords of the Sith by Paul S. Kemp. And this is a Star Wars uh, story. It's about, as you can see, you got the, you got Vader, you got the Emperor, uh, and this really is, uh, this was a fun read, and you know, part of the, um, part of the lore around Darth Vader is like how intimidating he really is, and how powerful he really is, and uh, this, uh, this book did a good job of giving that sense, but also uh, creating some uh, tension in him uh, from. Uh, with his relationship to the emperor. And so, you know, building towards where we know the story ends it with the emperor in Return of the Jedi and Vader and their dynamic, um, you know, having some kind of tension between uh, the Sith uh, master and apprentice, uh, you know, this did a good job of building that. And this takes place between uh, episode three and episode four and at the um, rebellion on Ryloth with the Twi'leks and all the nerds out there are just like, wow, Jason, you're really, you're really going for it. And I am going for it. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Four stars is what I rated it on Storygraph. And uh, if you're looking for a fun little bit of escapism, Lords of the Sith is great. This was also part of my uh, Goodreads challenge, or not Goodreads, my 52 books in 52 weeks challenge. It's a book that starts with the letter L. And so I'm trying my best to get through some of those items. Uh, and then the next book uh, that I completed uh, was actually an audiobook. 
uh, and an ebook. It's called Dead House Gates. It's book two in Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Uh, and I've been trying to follow along with the, the, the gentleman over at uh, Book Reviews Kill as they're doing their read through of Dead House Gates. And uh, this book, uh, the first book, Gardens of the Moon, Erickson really doesn't try to give you any help in making any sense of what's happening. You just are thrown into this world and it's like, oh, there's a, there's a huge war happening and what is going on? Deadhouse Gates is getting a little bit more clear. And it really is like you're trying to follow along with these characters and trying to figure out what is happening. Uh, and, you know, when you think about like the effect of warfare on people, uh, there's a lot of confusion. And so I thought... Uh, Erickson is doing a good job of creating confusion uh, for the reader uh, as these different factions are trying to come together and figure out what to do uh, in this uh, huge, sprawling, epic warfare situation. Um, and so I enjoyed this more than the previous book. Uh, I gave it 3.75 stars on Storygraph. And, uh, and so it was, it was good. Um, I'm currently reading this. This is one of those big, huge books too, that really slows me down on my audiobook listening, which is slowing me down on my overall count. And so, uh, yeah, so the next one, uh, memories of ice, I'm listening to that right now and it is even huger. And so it's taking a long time. Um, so yeah, but if you like big, big epic fantasy, uh, then the Ma Malazan books, uh, may be for you. The next one is uh, that I finished is a book I read in print, and it is Star Wars, The High Republic Era Convergence. And this is um, hundreds of years before the Skywalker epic in the Star Wars universe. And, uh, and so I've been reading through a lot of this, the High Republic stuff, and this is a smaller series uh, in this this era of Star Wars. Um, and it, it did take me a little while to get into part of the challenge that I'm having with these High Republic stories is uh, there's a lot of characters and I'm having a hard time keeping track of everybody uh, and trying to find a reason to care about these people as much as I care about, you know, Luke and, and Leia and Han and, and that era of Star Wars. Um, but I'm going to keep going. I do. I just love Star Wars so much. I just love it. Um, and so this was a this was a fine book. It, it got better as we went along. And I'm curious to see how book two goes. Um, but uh, I rated it 3.0 stars on Storygraph. Uh, and then I read I listened to On Writing by Stephen King. And this was part part of part of my 52 books in 52 weeks reading. This was a book that was recommended by a friend. Uh, that was one of the categories. And so, uh, yeah, so I listened to this. Excellent. This this was great. And it was read by Stephen King, which makes it even more interesting because it's his own voice telling us uh, his, uh, his story. And so, like, how he got into writing and all of that. But then also how he approaches writing. Uh, and, you know, I'm not a, the biggest Stephen King fan. I've read several of his books um, and I've enjoyed them, uh, but he is, uh, he's a master. He is very prolific, very productive, uh, and loves telling stories. And so, um, as somebody who is trying to write, I really enjoyed, uh, his perspective. I gave him this book, a five star, five star, uh, on story graph. And so, yeah, I would highly recommend this. If you're interested in writing at all, uh, it is good to, uh, to listen to this book or read it. Um, yeah recommend. Uh, the last book that I finished in February, and I finished it like right under the line um, and uh, on the 29th, actually. It's by a, a New Testament scholar, Nijay Gupta, the writer, a guide to uh, research, writing, and publishing in biblical studies. And this is for master's level students um, trying to help them build a system for their own life uh, for writing uh, and, you know, for research, for papers, articles, uh, books. And if they want to, uh, if people want to get into publishing their material, uh, Nijay Gupta does a great job of 
giving guidance and direction uh, for for people. And this is his own experience and his own um, his own system. And everybody has to kind of find their own system. Uh, but I I read this because I really appreciate uh, Nijay Gupta's uh, scholarship. I think he's he's brilliant. I love his personality online. Um, and the, the, what I've read from him, I really enjoy. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I wanted to see how he is able to produce so much, uh, when he also has the same limitations of time that everybody else has somehow Gupta uh, just really has a lot to publish. It's amazing. Uh, and so, yeah, so this was really helpful and there are some things where I was like, okay, I'm already doing that. And there were some things where I'm like, all right, I'll try to build those disciplines. Um, and especially as I'm trying to write my own book, uh, you know, there's some good systems in place uh, that I can I can pick up here. Uh, but then also a bit of a background on the publishing industry for biblical studies, you know, and I'm not trying to write academic level material, I'm trying to write more of a popular level resource. And, uh, and so yeah, so it's, uh, he, he writes both. And so he's a good person uh, to look into and to read uh, and learn from. And so, yeah, I, I'm giving this four stars on the uh, on Storygraph. And so, yeah, I would recommend it, especially if you are just starting uh, in an MA in biblical studies or theology. Uh, check out this book. I wish I had this when I started my MA. I, if I ever have an opportunity to teach at a master's level students who are just getting started, First thing I'm going to do is recommend that every student read a book like this, if not this very book. So, yeah, The Writer by Nijay Gupta. Check it out. Check it out. So those are the books I finished in uh, in February. So what am I currently trying to read? Here's a few of the things that I'm working on uh, for this, uh, this, this month in March. Uh, and the first one is a, a big old chunky book and I'm going to put the dust jacket on it. So it's not just a blank white cover. Uh, this is a book that I have been thoroughly enjoying, uh, and kind of taking my time with biblical critical theory by Christopher Watkin. Uh, this book is amazing. It is, uh, biblical studies. It is philosophy it is cultural dynamics at work. Uh, it, I, I just have loved reading this book, um, and it, it's, yeah, I, I'm excited to talk talk about it when I'm all done and try to process it. And I'm, I'm hoping to be able to finish it actually this week. Um, and so, yeah, I, yeah, this is a gift, and this like a gift to the church and to academics. I think this book is going to be. Uh, talked about for a long time, biblical critical theory. Uh, Another one, this is our staff book that we're reading for this month, and it's called The Relational Pastor by Andrew Root. I've read several books by Root, and this is one of his earlier ones, Um, and he is looking at how um, churches and leaders can uh, sometimes use relationship uh, in and how they can redeem relationship and, and, and leadership in a good way and not try to use relationship to be manipulative, uh, or influencing people to, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that the leadership culture in churches, uh, need help with. And, um, I, I picked this up because as an introvert, uh, I thought maybe it would be a good resource to learn how to move beyond my own introversion. And, uh, so far, um, it hasn't really gotten into that, but I am enjoying reading it nonetheless. And then also, um, I have a couple of different novels that I want to read this month, but I just picked up on Saturday and started reading The Alchemist by Paulo Co- Co- Coelho. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, um, but this is a part of my uh, 52 books in 52 weeks. And I can't remember what category it fits in, but uh, it's something that I've wanted to read for a while. And it's a shorter book. Uh, and I'm just a few, um, maybe 25% through it. Uh, and I'm really enjoying his writing style. It's very accessible. And, uh, he's telling the story of a young shepherd boy so far, and I don't know where it goes. I really don't know anything about this book other than it's very popular. And, um, 
yeah. And so I've been enjoying reading so far and I look forward to seeing how this one, uh, how this one ends. And so, yeah, so those are a few of the books I'm looking forward to reading in March. And I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you are reading? What are the things that you're enjoying? Uh, if you have any thoughts on any of the books that I uh, mentioned so far, then please leave a comment. Um, if you want to follow along with my reading, you can go to my story graph uh, profile and you can see all the things that I'm reading there as well. But uh, yeah, March is going to be a busy month for me as a as a pastor and uh, with Easter coming up. And so I'm not really going to put a lot of pressure to try to finish a whole bunch of books. Um, and we'll just see kind of how things go. But uh, yeah, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I, uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the different things that people say. Thank you. Have a great day. Happy reading.